So what I'm actually talking about today is um, what a talk I've titled Burn Your Blog, um, <laughs> which may sound slightly counterintuitive given that uh, I'm the head of content and a lot of the time we work on our company's blogs, uh, our clients' blogs. But um, I think it's time that all of our clients should burn their blogs. Not just burn it, kill it, tear it in half, take it out the back of the office, shoot it in the head, do whatever you have to do. Um, and now I'm going to explain to you why. Um, who has a drawer like this in their kitchen? Yeah, so this is, this is a drawer in my kitchen. We call it the miscellaneous drawer. Within the miscellaneous drawer, we have a whole bunch of different drugs, legal. Scissors, we still have, I actually went through the drawer in preparation for this, we still have the instruction manual for our kettle. And I don't know why, because the kettle only has one button, but there we go. <clears throat> tape measure, sticky tape. Um, we actually have twine, we don't have a garden. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff in there. You can see why this kind of thing's happen in a kitchen, because you have a very regimented structure for your kitchen. You have a cupboard in which your plates go. You have a cupboard in which your saucepans go. You have a drawer in which your cutlery goes. Everything's sorted out. But if there's other stuff that doesn't fit naturally in one of those places, you go, yeah, we'll put it in there. We'll forget about it. And then when there's something that you need that doesn't quite fit into one of those other categorizations, you say, oh, it's probably in that drawer there. Um, and actually, you can see this kind of behavior a lot in a lot of other places with humans. So if you think about like Chinese takeaway menus, for example, you've got you know Szechuan dishes, chow mein dishes, and then right at the bottom corner you've got sundries, and it'll be like chips and curry sauce and all that sort of stuff. And, it, and they'll go there because they don't belong in any of the other categories. And actually, I think the the dictionary definition of sundries is something like items which aren't important enough to have their own category or something like that. Um, there's also actually do you know the Dewey Decimal System which is the numbered system that you use to organize books in libraries. And it's designed to be an indexing system for all of the knowledge in the world. But each section within the Dewey Decimal System has a section for miscellaneous. So e even what's generally considered to be the best categorization system of knowledge for humans has loads of buckets in which you can put stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else. Um, and you can also see this kind of behavior in web design and digital marketing. So if we look at, for example, Bitly, we all use Bitly every day. They have a couple of different menu items there. If something doesn't particularly fit into one of those menu categorizations, where do you think they're going to put it? In the blog. Similarly, MailChimp, we all use MailChimp every day. Features, pricing, support, very clear, very concise. If something doesn't fit into one of those, whack it on the blog. WordPress, we all use that many, many times a day. Very concise menu items down there. If something doesn't fit into one of those menu items, we'll probably throw it on the blog. And the, you know, these are three of the world's biggest digital services. I would say there's probably not a day that goes by that I don't use all three of these. Um, so they're some of the biggest websites in the world. If you take a look at their blogs, we look at Bitly's blog. Uh, we've got a couple of different things on there. We've got, a, we've got a kind of product feature type item. We've got a case study. Uh, and we've got like a how-to type stuff. So there's a real mix of content going on, on there. If we look at the MailChimp blog, uh, it's about kind of their internal machinations, kind of an inside baseball type feature. And then if we look at the WordPress blog, uh, it's just release notes. So what we're actually doing there is three menu items with identical names on three of the biggest websites in the world, and we're providing three completely different experiences for users. But again, you can see how people ended up there because they're creating new things for a website. And in any business, there's going to be internal pressure to build new things for the website, and they have to go somewhere. So they, people ask themselves this question. Does this have a logical home on a new website? If it's a new product, it will go within where well, the products item on their menu. Uh, if it's if it's you know a, a support item, uh, a how to, it will go on the support section. But if it doesn't, they say no, it doesn't actually have actually have a logical home. Now nah, let's put it on the blog. It will probably fit there. And this results in an incredibly confusing experience for users. But not only that, if you look at actually Google's SEO starter guide, they kind of tell you not to do this because they have a line that says you have to stay organized around a topic and you should avoid dumping large amounts of text on various topics onto a single page. So we're creating a confusing experience for users, but we're also creating a confusing experience for search engines. So really, we're helping nobody by having these blogs that we're just treating as areas where everything else goes. So what we've been working really hard with our clients to do is to, is to put some kind of topic or purpose or mission statement behind their blog and actually you know, give it a name and give it an editorial identity so people know what goes on there. And I just wanted to give you a few examples of companies um, that are doing this really well at the moment. So I don't know if any of you have read GE Reports, GE General Electric, uh, the company, company founded by, I think it was Thomas Edison. 
Um, been around for, for donkey's years, been involved in everything from jet engines to light bulbs, they're massive. Um, and they have this, this website that um, basically tells stories from within GE and all the amazing things that their technology is doing. And they've given themselves the mission statement of, of GE reports a daily news video and social media hub covering GE's transformation into the world's largest digital industrial company. That's a really, really clear mission statement. And they've got a really clear editorial identity. So they know exactly what goes in there. So if somebody from another department in GE comes along and says, we've got this new kind of energy efficient light bulb that we, uh, that we need to sell, they can say, well, it doesn't belong here. Go away. Um, similarly, I don't know if any of you have heard of um, Piano, who are a company that make a sort of content gating software type thing. Um, they've created this thing called Traffic Magazine, which is I definitely recommend you go and check it out and read it. It's really, really high quality stuff. What they say it's all about is Traffic Magazine uses the tools of journalism to examine the media itself, to analyze the industry as it reinvents itself in the digital age. And they have, they have some really, really fascinating articles on there. Um, and they've given themselves a purpose. It's really, really, really excellent. And of course, the other company that's kind of moved in this direction is Google themselves. So they, a few months ago, launched this new area called the Keyword. I think they had 19 or 20 company blogs before. They've amalgamated them all into one. And they've actually put it on a, a, the, the URL for this. They're using their own branded top-level domain name. So it's blog.google, which is quite indulgent. But I suppose when you have that much money, you can do what you want. Um, so they've said their purpose for the Keyword um, is to make it easier for you to find Google's official word on any given topic, which may sound quite mundane, but actually when you think about it in an industry like ours, sometimes it can be quite hard to find Google's official word on something because a lot of people are repeating something that they heard secondhand at a conference four years ago. Um, so having a centralized resource where we can go and discover what Google's opinion is on any topic, is really, really useful. Um, so the interesting thing with a lot of these places is they're actually run by um, publishing people. Um, so GE reports, they actually hired a journalist who, I think his name's Thomas Kellner, he worked at Forbes for about eight years. And they hired him to basically be a, be a, a kind of investigative reporter within the company and find all these stories and write about them. Um, similarly with um, Traffic Magazine, that's run by a guy who wrote for Politico and uh, Dish previously. So these are all people with backgrounds in this kind of storytelling. And if you want to be telling stories about your company, who better to do that than a a natural storyteller. Um, so this is, I think, a fantastic direction to move in. It's one we're trying to move all, our, all of our clients towards, and that's me.